thank you for watching. Well, I've I'm looking for getting funding for a project I'm working on, which is a rep wrap that will print metal as well as plastic. But I have it, the technique I'm working on is very uncertain, so I wouldn't never ask anyone for donations. So instead, by watching this video, you're helping because. Everything this video makes will go into helping to fund the uh, research and making the prototype, which I've got some bits here to show you. Now, I have some parts here, some of them that I can show you all the bits of and some that I can't, because uh, as one of the people I follow on YouTube, Billy Zainshek, who I can't remember, I should have looked it up, but he, he made a rep rap and he was looking through things and he noticed that um, well one of the ideas was to have like a circular table but then just a moving arm it's one well, that's been talked about on the forums quite a lot and, um, and someone actually filed a patent for this and so if of course you patented it before anyone was making it you could uh, stop anyone making it which isn't really what we want but anyway the project that hopefully you've stayed to listen to you're helping is for a supersonic particle deposition or hypersonic particle deposition seems to have various names which is used by various processes to coat things with particles basically the process works that if you accelerate a particle of metal fast enough and crash it into the same metal it will by some process that isn't entirely understood it will deform and basically weld itself to the other piece of metal. Now they do this with a spray where they put coatings on but obviously a spray has a, a large diameter normally of about a centimetre or so and that's useless if you want to build parts like in a rep wrap. You need a collimated beam and that's what this piece is to do. Now I can't show you the mechanism inside to collimate the particles because I just, uh, it'd probably come under prior art in patenting, but I don't know. And I don't want to risk anyone screwing it up before I get the chance to show everyone. So that's a secret for the moment. But this bit, this bit's quite simple. This is just a convergent, divergent nozzle, which was a complete pain to actually turn the taper all the way down here to do it. And it's the stream that's going, that's, well, that's modelled to come out of it is a fine stream of particles in a large stream of air. Well, I'm not going to tell you how quite that's achieved, <laughs> but um, the reason you need quite a large stream of air is you need a good length of acceleration. This is probably a fairly short nozzle, but uh, the longer the nozzle the better, but if you want a longer nozzle and you want this fine long taper, then um, you have to have a certain diameter or the or the flow stream will become unstable for the length of the nozzle. So you can't just make tiny nozzles to spray little bits about, that won't work. Although I have various designs of um, nozzle to try out. This is the simplest and easiest one to build first, so I'm going with this, but I have various different plans for that. As for the flow through, it was fairly... the flow through the nozzle is fairly simple, the flow of the particles is the important thing. And uh, you can, well, when I modelled it with speeds in, uh, was it, uh, on fluid flow uh, programs with air, you know, like air, say that the one I'm building the heat chamber to do is up to, say, a thousand degrees Celsius to heat the compressed air. And uh, you can get speeds of, say, 1200 metres per second through a nozzle like this. So, I need about 800 meters per second to bond aluminium, so that's that's uh, what I'm aiming for with that. But you need much slower speeds for plastic. It's it's not nearly as critical. Of course, one of the the problems because I'm intending to use compressed air. Most of these systems would use say nitrogen. Not only do you get a higher speed at lower temperatures, but of course it won't catch fire. One of the problems if you put powdered aluminium into a heated compressed air chamber. A thousand degrees C, it would explode. Well, the powder would ignite anyway, which is highly undesirable. So this system has to keep the powder 
only to be injected in the high velocity section where the temperature and pressure is exchanged into kinetic energy or the velocity of the air. If you can keep the powder separate in that section then of course it won't explode. So that's, that's what this part does and I have lots of parts coming for this at the moment that I'm waiting for. I've got valves to control the airflow and uh, pop to con well just a, like a spray pot to contain the powder and a little um, or a uh, pressure control valve to pressurise the pot to help the powder through and things because the pot won't take the full pressure that these parts will. Anyway onto this you have the the heat chamber which this is the the main body of. You can see it's got the same holes to bolt onto here. I made it all chunky so I could bolt other things on here if I wanted and do all sorts of things. This is going to have the tungsten wire heating element in. I chose tungsten because it's got a very very high melting point. Um, it, it, uh, so it can go up to a thousand or more degrees Celsius. The insulation, this has all got to be insulated inside here with... Um, I'm going to use fire clay because I was looking around at insulation, it's basically the cheapest highest temperature thing you can get so as I'm looking at it as a rep wrap project I'm not looking to use incredibly fancy materials. I've got the lid for it here which uh, should be skimmed off. I haven't, I've only just got a plain hole in the middle that's probably where the air index is going to go once I get the fittings and can see. One of the reasons I haven't lined it yet because I have the fire clay is I have a uh, oh, what is it called now? A thermocouple! <laughs> yeah, so it went out of my head. A little meter, you can pick that up so cheap. But um, I need to know, I don't think it's quite long enough to go in the top down to the bottom, so I might have to put it in the side, in which case I've got to make sure that I don't, I've got to have something in when I fill it with fire clay to cover up the hole. Anyway, and then the lid just uh, lines up on here, if I have my marked each way because my holes aren't exactly round because they're only just rough drilled. Like that. So this can all be bolted on and I have some thick mica sheet I may put between here to insulate the lid from it. And we got six bolts to screw straight into flange on here. This has all been custom welded up. Everything has out of, out of scrap. To be honest, most of it's built out of scrap. Um, so that's to heat the compressed air coming in. One of the one of the things with this design is that you end up with a lot of wasted air. If you think you've got this big stream of air coming out of here, to compared to the tiny stream of particles, then uh, then you're going to uh, waste a lot of the hot air. So one of the things I've been working on is a uh, oh wait oh hello. Is a way of um, compressing. Oh, you want to be on the video too, do you? Oh. A way of compressing the or reusing the hot air. See, most um, compressors. This is another thing I can't really explain to you because it would be highly patentable, and I know that this would. Is is so the compressor in this case? The, the nearest analogous device would be steam injector on a steam boiler, though it's not technically correct, but it uses the temperature differential between the cold water and the steam and the fact that you can condense the steam to create the effects needed to use the steam to push water into the boiler itself, which would seem impossible but when you work out all how it works it suddenly you realise it is. Mine doesn't use that, it needs a cold supply of high pressure air and then needs a hot supply of low pressure air but it allows you to take any source of hot air and use its uh, energy to compress it up. Which, in, in, so you have a thermal exchange between the cold high pressure air and the hot low pressure air. But I can't explain how that works unfortunately, because someone could nick that one. <laughs> um, but that would allow you to reuse the hot air be coming out of here when you are spraying a high temperature material. So how would you print objects with it? Well, you have this mounted and you could have a XY table here that could also move down. It needs to have some kind of support material. 
which I'm not sure what I would use yet. Preferably water soluble. A few issues you have is, for instance, like the metal particles are coming out much faster than, say, plastic. So if you wanted to print metal onto plastic, you would need to, say, lower, give a layer of low velocity first, so the metal particles bond to the plastic, and then you could bond the metal particles to that layer of metal at high velocity. Another issue is that this would be having very hot air coming out the end, which if you run that over then plastic, it would all melt. So you need some kind of uh, deflector set a certain distance away to deflect the hot air sideways, with a hole in the middle just to let the particles and a small amount of hot air through. You could also perhaps put um, feed some cold air supply to that to blow around to cool the material around as it's moved under it, as otherwise plastic and probably the support material could melt. Um, but this is this part of the project is basically to just test out the particle collimation, the whether I can achieve the velocities I need out of this kind of system and do some basic research. So if you think it's a good idea, click like, um, share the video and perhaps click on an advert because I think that helps. I know it's annoying but but that I think is the best solution for any funding I would like for this because I don't think it's, I don't think it's nearly certain enough to warrant anything like a Kickstarter. It's very very and um, it's at least this way if enough people view it and are interested then it costs them nothing all you're doing is looking at the video so the research results basically cost you nothing except the time if you wish to spend it looking at the video or waste it depending on your point of view um, and that's it thank you very much for watching um, if you enjoyed it, please get some other people to watch or come back and watch again. I'm not sure if you can do that, if you can count views twice from the same computer. I don't know about that. If anyone knows about that, tell me in the comments. Uh, oh, that's it. Stop this damn thing.